Hello everyone. It is Monday, July the 10th, 2023. My name is Reese. I am an ICT uh, apprentice and I am here to talk about optimal stop placement. I'm here to talk about optimizing your stop placement, uh, including for difficult market conditions. So let's first get back to basics with ICT trading and that is where does the analysis always start? The analysis should start with a higher time frame draw on liquidity. Your first question might be, higher than what? Higher than the 10 minute time frame, I would say. Okay, so if you are day trading, I would call everything from 10 minutes down. So 10 minute, five minute, four minute, three minute, two minute, and one minute. Those are all sort of your entry time frames. 15 minute and above. So let's say one hour chart is a good example. I would not call the one hour chart a quote unquote entry time frame. I would call it a higher time frame analysis time frame. So for example, we had a one hour BISI down here that was a draw on liquidity. There are two types of draws on liquidity in terms of 15 minutes and above that you should be looking for. And that is a liquidity draw, uh, a liquidity point, so a higher low, or an inefficiency draw on liquidity. Okay, so we can see like for example here we get up to our one hour chart later on during regular trading hours today we can see that that rejection block was also a drawn liquidity and a rejection block is a type of liquidity signature and it ended up drawing price down. Ideally every ICT analysis, every trade analysis should start with asking yourself well where is the higher time frame draw on liquidity? Where is price going? Um, but I want to talk about optimizing the stop placement. So we start the analysis with, well, where do I think that price is drawing on a 15 minute and above time frame, meaning our higher time frame. And yes, that can go all the way up to the daily and the weekly if you are close enough to a daily or weekly level. Now that we get down to our 10 minute and below, which are, I would call our entry time frames, I want to talk about optimizing the stop placement. After analyzing the higher time frame analysis, you need to uh, ask yourself what pattern you are using or what PD array you are using to enter the marketplace and then that should help you determine um, where the stop should be. So like, for example, I took losses today and as you know, uh, whenever I take losses, I go immediately into anal analysis mode and try and, um, well, you know, basically see what I did wrong and how I could have done better. So let's get up here to a, let's do a three minute chart and I'll talk about the mistakes that I made. So the big loss that I took today was right here. Um, I was taking longs on the way down and then uh, it ended up plunging lower on me and I didn't have a stop stop uh, in the market. So sometimes you're going to get the draw on liquidity wrong and I want to talk to you about well where should the stop be? Well you first need to ask yourself well what PD array am I entering on? What is my PD array idea? So let's say for example you're using this BISI here and you're saying okay I think the price is drawing higher even though you know you might be wrong which is okay guys sometimes you're going to just get the draw on liquidity wrong. Let's say that you're trying to play that busy there as an inverted fair value gap. And you're not crazy for thinking that because notice that candle right there. So where should the stop be if you're trying to play that as an inverted fair value gap? Optimal stop placement is going to be under that wick inefficiency right there. So your optimal stop placement in terms of trying to play that as an inverted fair value gap to go higher would go exactly 139 evens because that is a wick inefficiency and if price gets below that that inverted fair value gap idea is is probably incorrect okay so there's an example there of optimal stop placement let's go on the way down let's say that you were trying to play this busy as an inverted fair value gap and again you can see that price did try to find support on it but ended up going through where would uh, a good stop placement be? So you're trying to play that as an inverted fair value gap and it did give you some support. 
I would say that ideally you wouldn't want to see it go to 128 three quarters. So again, you would be stopped out, right? Again. Um, at that point, you would take in two losses and you're probably beat up pretty emotionally and psychologically, but it's better to take those losses than it is to take these losses, okay? So um, optimal stop placement, sometimes if it's, op you know, if you're really trying to, to try it, play it, play it optimally, you are going to end up taking more losses. Your your accuracy is going to go down. But the key is really knowing what PD array you're entering on, okay, and and why. So it starts with that higher time frame draw on liquidity. If you thought at that point it was higher up here, that's fine. Uh, it ended that ended up being incorrect, which is going to happen. So in the same token. If you would take in repeated losses, it would be better to take repeated losses on the way down than it would be to take the big loss. So it's always knowing what PD array you're entering on. Now let's talk about some of your uh, liquidity PD arrays like a rejection block. If you're trying to enter in, let's say that at this point when the market is here, you, you are thinking the market is going to draw back down to this balance price range down here, right? So you think that the market's going to turn around here and go back down. That obviously is not where price at that time was drawing, but you're going to get things wrong sometimes. Let's say that you enter in on that rejection block right there. Where would your stop go? You don't want to put it above the exact same high because that's what we call internal liquidity. You want to put it right there. One tick above that high, which comes in at 139 three quarters. Why? Because that is external liquidity. Does that make sense? So you get stopped out there. So again, an optimal stop placement is neither too tight nor too loose, and it's a full recognition of where, what PD array you are using to enter. If it's a, if it's going to be like a turtle suit pattern, rejection block, some sort of liquidity base entry, then the stop loss should go above external liquidity like that. If it's going to be um, an inefficiency entry, so for example, like you're trying to enter in on an inverted fair value gap, then the stop loss should maybe be one tick below the consequent encroachment of, a, of another PD array, like an inverted wick right below it. I hope that makes sense. Um, now there's two types of stop losses that you should be using. Let's say, for example, that you had the draw on liquidity correct here and you ended up going higher. So your PD array that you entered on was this order block right here okay so let's say that you entered in on the mean threshold of that order block right there first off where should where should your initial stop be well it can go a little bit below the order block that you entered on that that would be fine I would say do you see this busy right here you wouldn't want to see price tick below that so if you entered in there at 117 quarters midway point of that order block right there your initial stop placement should probably be about 109 evens so that is that busy that's one tick below it you really wouldn't want would not want to see price trade below that and of course it didn't so let's see that you got the drawn liquidity correct which at that time it was higher um, let's say that your first entry is going to be at the mean threshold of that order block which is which was a fantastic entry okay as the market goes higher, you need to be trailing your stop loss up, first to break even and then trailing it in profit. Now, your break even and your trailing stops similarly should be based on PD arrays as they are forming. So, let's say, for example, that we think the drawn liquidity is higher and we see this inverted fair value gap form. Okay. You wouldn't want to put it, uh, your stop loss one tick below that inverted fair value gap right as it's forming. Instead, uh, you'd want to wait for it to trade through the inverted fair value gap and then at that point your stop would go right there. Not, not your initial stop but your trailing stop. So your stop would go from down here to up here. Okay. Now let's see that you see the market creates another BISI and you see that it leaves it open. You trail the stop right there. Now you see an order block is formed and you see that price comes in and 
bounces off about the mean threshold of that as you see this price action stop loss goes there okay one tick below the mean threshold of that order block we're trailing the market up we see this busy here we see the price does not trade back down to it stop loss is going to end up being right there okay because we would not want to see the price come back so we're following the market and our stops with the PD arrays as they form let's see that you have this order block here you look at the mean threshold of that and your stop loss would end up going one tick below that order block so that way as the market continues to trail higher and then by the time that the market gets up here you should probably have already had your profit limit um, triggered as that was our resettlement SIBI rejection block and then resettlement SIBI um, but in any event you would be you would be safe you trail it all the way all the way up so just to recap optimal stop placement you always want to start your ICT trade analysis with looking at the 15 minute and above time frame to figure out a reasonable higher time frame draw on liquidity and it could be an inefficiency like this SIBI or it could be a liquidity target like this low it, it, sh it has to be one of those two an inefficiency or a liquidity target that you think that on a higher time frame price is drawing to could be a regular trading hours gap let's see if we have that so like for example, we have this regular trading hours volume imbalance. We appear to be drawing to that. So we, we always start the analysis with a higher time frame draw on liquidity of some kind. And yes, you are going to get it wrong sometimes. Okay? You are, sometimes you are just going to get the draw on liquidity incorrect. Doesn't mean that you actually are going to lose money or, or whatever. Uh, you know it's just unfortunate and it is what it is you, you want to try and get it correct but you won't always get it correct so optimal stop placement if okay if you are on um, let's say for example you're entering in on a liquidity signature like you're entering in on a rejection block you need to look at some inefficiency or some liquidity point that is lower so external liquidity and that's where your initial stop loss needs to be is external liquidity and that might be far away okay it might be far away so you can only enter in on your liquidity entries like wh what do I mean at liquidity entries so the PD arrays in which you are entering in on stops and what are those three drives pattern turtle soup um, ICT bullish and bearish uh, breakers you can enter in on the manipulation so those are uh, an ICT rejection block. Those are the four that I can name off the top of my head. So ICT rejection block, ICT turtle suit pattern, ICT uh, bullish and bearish breaker pattern, and ICT three drives pattern. Those would be examples of liquidity entries where you're actually trying to enter in on the stops. At, with those entries, your stop is going to be far away. It's going to be external liquidity. I hope that that makes sense. It's it's it can't be the nearest higher low because that's internal liquidity. It's got to be external liquidity. That's for your liquidity entries like a rejection block, or this was also by the way ICT bullish breaker pattern low high low. So let's say for example you got long at that rejection block, you needed to look at a higher time frame and see where the external liquidity was, and it was all the way down here. You're probably thinking to yourself, that's a 24 point stop. Well, yeah, guys, it is. So that's why you only enter in on one contract or you go on the micro NASDAQ because, guys, the price analysis remains the same. Where the stop has to go to be optimal remains price based. So it doesn't matter how far it is, it matters that it's external liquidity. I hope that makes sense. All right, so that's your liquidity entries. Now let's say that you have an inef... Uh, I'll just write these out.
Okay. So optimal stop placement, initial stop placement for liquidity entries. Turtle suit patterns, three drives pattern, ICT advanced breaker theory and ICT rejection blocks. The initial stop should be above or below external liquidity. So not internal liquidity, the nearest higher low, but the one that's further away from that. Okay, so this, for example, if you entered short here or here, that would be a rejection block entry. So just to give you an example of what I mean by that, if you were to get short right here, that's ICT rejection block, your stop would have to be up here. Does that make sense? That's external liquidity. Uh, and yes, these are going to be pretty far away entries. So to be optimal, though, that's where it has to be. Okay, so we've talked about liquidity entries. Now let's talk about inefficiency entries. Okay, so All right, so what are, what are our patterns that you're entering in on an inefficiency? Fair value gaps, so SIBI and BISI entries, um, WIC inefficiencies, so consequent encroachment of WICs, order blocks or another block theory entry. So if you're entering in uh, on a stop going above an order block, for example, could it be a mitigation block, propulsion block, those are all block theory. Traditional breaker entry, so basically like let's say that you're calling even though, by the way, this idea didn't work out, that's totally fine. Let's see, you have low, high, and then low. Let's say that you got short right there, assuming that the market would turn back down. If this, so for example, that's ICT bearish breaker right there, your stop should be probably right there okay and it almost worked out didn't quite work out um, your stop should be right above that high uh, or it could go above that do you see this little uh, ICT order block over here could your stop could go there um, again that's that's like a traditional breaker play where you're going short as it's coming back up into the breaker I probably to be honest with you would, would not do that it didn't look like price was going to stop there and it, of course it didn't uh, but to be optimal your stop would go one tick above that high it would go into 149.50 and then by the way you ended up break even on that trade if you if you got out and saw that you were wrong so that would be optimal stop placement there for a traditional ICT breaker um, if you're playing something like I said you know let's say that you're trying to play this as an inverted fair value gap your stop placement would go uh, one tick below that order block okay and you can see the price doesn't go there so that is if you're playing that as an inverted BISI 
you would not want to see price trade below one tick below that order block or it could be one tick below that wick inefficiency right there does that make sense that would be where your stop placement would go and then we're trailing it higher okay so this is not an exact science guys but there it is um, when the market is in a buy program or a sell program it should basically respect every PD array that forms a, as it happens most every PD array okay so that's why you that's why the trailing the stop works um, trailing stop Okay, guys. Uh, and then that's going to be your... That's going to be your break-even and trailing stops. They should basically... The break-even the break even stop is a risk mitigation or risk management tool. And it should not come into the marketplace either too early or too late. It should come in exactly at the right time. And yes, you are going to mess that up. And yes, it happens. Uh, the profit stop, if the market's moving in your favor, should should go below PD arrays or inefficiencies as they form. Okay, so as they form, uh, you don't want to see price really bust your inefficiencies, so to speak, your order blocks. And then risk should be taken off as price moves in your favor. I hope, I hope that this video gives you a better idea of ICT optimal stop placement theory. We talked about um, liquidity-based entries, the initial stop, uh, going, going above or below uh, external liquidity for, for liquidity-based entries where you're actually trying to enter in on the stops, which is difficult, by the way. Um, but, it, you know, it can be done. We then have optimal stop placement for inefficiency entries. Um, That's also your new day opening gap, new week opening gap, uh, and resettlement gaps, and then the trailing and break even stop as well. Okay, guys, this has been a discussion of optimal stop placement for uh, for ICT style trading. Um, I know that I wasn't like perfectly on point here, but this should give you an idea. Um, Remember guys, the stop is a big part of it, the trailing and the break even stop as well in terms of risk management, in terms of optimizing your trading. Uh, it's probably the number one thing that at, at which I have to improve, especially for difficult market conditions, uh, kind of like today, kind of like Monday trading. Um, the stop management is, is gonna be a big part of, of um, becoming successful even in difficult price action. Okay guys, God bless, Lord willing, we will bounce back today. This has been a discussion of ICT Optimal Stop Placement. My name is Reese. I'm an apprentice of the Master Trader Inner Circle Trader, Michael Huddleston. Bye-bye, guys.